Hello, morning, afternoon, and good evening to you, the good world people of YouTube. Hope you're out there. Hope you are feeling grand and always well in your world. Hi, how are you? Uh, today is another uh, episode of How to Play Like Peter Green, and today we're going to be covering the song Albatross. Uh, it's a video I've been meaning to get around to do for a while, and I'm finally there. Yay! And the crowd goes wild. This is an awesome song. It's gorgeous. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all the main kind of parts. I'm going to show you Peter's parts. I'm going to show you Danny Kerwin's parts as well. Uh, as much as Jeremy Spencer appears on the live version and the Top of the Pops version, he didn't actually play on the track. Um, the side parts actually Peter Green playing uh, a strap lap style, uh, and I'll get to that later on. Um, so first thing I want to do is talk about the chords. It's very simple. There's only two chords in Albatross, and um, yeah, and then we'll get into the actual kind of main riffs and, and talk about the, you know some of the guitar harmonies and little bits and pieces and the tone. Uh, you kind of what we're going for with the song as well. So without further ado, let's get into Albatross. That sounds really weird, but anyway. Okay, so uh, first things first, chords to Albatross are E major and F sharp minor and resolve. And it's a gorgeous resolve, I've got to say. That's the chords. That is it. Just those two chords, E major and F sharp minor. And the song's key is E major. So that's that. Um, Tone-wise for this song, it wants to be really clean. It's like super clean. I've got quite a bit of reverb on as well, and it just so you can hear it. It's not too much. I don't think you want like like absolute layers of reverb on. Just a nice kind of like you know, just give a bit of, you know, sound a bit of depth when it kind of like decays and whatnot. And tonally, uh, I would use clean channels on your amplifier. Really, kind of. I'm using the cl 20s clean channel. I've got uh, treble at one bass at three and I've got the volume all the way up and it just adds having the the bass higher than the treble just gives it a nice warm sound but having the treble in there just gives it kind of a bit of a bit of sparkles I'd say so when you kind of do you know you still got that kind of uh, bite so to say so that's kind of sound you want to be going for warm dark but with a little bit of you know bit of edge so to say and um, the song is predominantly uh, neck pickup on the last pause. Peter very rarely, very ever rarely used the bridge pickup, so it's, it's uh, all neck uh, on a last pause, really, apart from the slide bit, which I'll get to in a bit, which is neck pickup on a strat. And I'll get to that later on, which I'll spoke about again. Anyway, so uh, that's the kind of sound you want to be going for. And I say just. <laughs> the important thing about Albatross is the dynamic of how you play. And you can hit, Peter was a master of dynamic, and that, that's kind of one of the things you've got to kind of retain to play the songs kind of, you know, in, in style of, so to say. His, his dynamic is unreal, and I'm still working on it. It's a very hard thing to get. It's the hardest aspect of Peter's playing by far, is the dynamic of how he played. So, that's the sound, that's the chords. I say neck pickup only. Um, what else to say? Uh, yeah, a little bit of, you know. Nice bit, nice helping of reverb, not too much, so it's kind of like washed out kind of sound, but you know, just a nice kind of kind of uh, depth to your sound. So that's that. So without further ado, let's get into talking about the main riff. Okay, so first riff is this one. the core riff of the song really. So first thing is you're playing the B note on the A string. So it's second fret A string, which is a B note. So there. And you only play that once. Now you come down to the sixth uh, string on your middle, uh, it's basically an A major. So sixth uh, fret on your uh, middle finger on your G string. And uh, then your first finger bars the B and the high E strings on the fifth fret. Because it's kind of a little A major kind of triads, I'd say, really. So, B note. And only play the G, B, and E strings as well. Just kind of, you know, just nicely kind of rake down them. Just get a kind of real nice floaty feel. And then all you do is you go to a G, uh, sharp, uh, G sharp minor, and you basically bar 
the bottom fret, the G, B and high E strings with your first finger. And then back to your A, and then back to your G sharp. So the whole thing really slow, B note. One more time. And it has an absolutely gorgeous sound, it really is. And uh, another thing to note is Peter would do this kind of rocking thing with his finger, and like if you do it straight, and you do what Peter does, you can hear the notes kind of wobbling. It almost adds like a little bit. It's not, I wouldn't, it's kind of like a very, very, very mild vibrato. It's really, it's really strange. It's almost not vibrato. Kind of here, you can kind of do a different kind of speed and it just warbles those notes and that's something Peter would do a lot. It's just a really cool thing to kind of keep in mind. So that's the main riff of Albatross. I say B note, A, uh, a major, G sharp minor. And back to A, and G sharp again. And it does that twice around the first uh, first go around, and then we get to the first riff of uh, Albatross. So let's get to that one. Okay, so second riff of Albatross is this. This is where the song changes from E major to an F uh, sharp major, uh, minor. So, uh, first thing we're doing is we're hammering on from the second fret on the A string to the fourth fret. Like that. And then we go down to the D string on the second fret. Then we're coming back up to a fourth fret on the A string. And then the next one has to be a slide, it doesn't really work with a hammer on it, it needs to be a slide. It's slide from the 4th fret on D string to the 6th fret, and then back to the 4th fret on the D string. So the whole thing so far is... I'll try and get all my fingers out, I'll try to do it with two fingers so you just kind of get them out of the way. Slower. That's the first part. Next part is play the fourth fret on the A string. And you play that note twice. And then you do the slide between the fourth and sixth again. And then to finish off, you play the 4th fret on the A string note, twice, and then you slide between the 2nd and the 4th on the D string. And then you play the 4th uh, fret on the A string, and then you just slide from the 2nd to the 4th to the 2nd again, to finish off. So really slow, the whole thing is... Okay, so that's the first, well, that's the second, that's the kind of main theme of the song there. And uh, there's three variations of that. That's variation one, variation two I'll get to in a sec, and variation three is kind of like the end one and outro. So uh, that's the first one, and so hopefully you can see what I'm doing if I'm not explaining it very well. So, uh, that's the first one, let's go on to the second. Okay, so, uh, variation two is on the, the kind of the main theme of Albatross. Starts exactly the same. Does there 
this, which is uh, you start on your fourth fret on your D string, you hammer onto the sixth fret on your G on your D string, and then you go down to the G string fourth fret, and then you go to the sixth uh, fret G string, and then you slide from the fourth to the sixth, and then back to the fourth again. So hammer on fourth to the sixth. Move down to the G string, fourth, and then uh, sixth G string, and then slide four, six, four. up this variation slide from the second to the fourth on your A string so you kind of play it once and then slide it leave it to hang for a sec and you go down to the second fret on your D string then you go to the uh, fourth fret and then you slide it to the sixth on the D string and then you finish up on the D string on the second fret So So that whole uh, variation two is like this. And you finish off with the same thing. Which is the fourth fret. Slide between the second and the fourth, back to the second on the on the D string. You see these little variations that make this song so cool, and it's also really important. I I don't think I've mentioned it yet. I don't know. Is at first note. Peter really digs into that note. So always really kind of attack that note. I think his strings are a bit more alive than mine are. After that, it's the kind of the first little harm, harmony guitar part. So let's get to the harmony guitar part. That was a nice little segue, even though it was a mess up. But anyway, okay. So the uh, Peter's part in the guitar harmony is this. you are bending up the 11th fret on your G string and what you kind of do you bend it up and then you kind of let it come down and then you bend it back up again and you're bending up a tone there so you bend up to that note and the next time around you go so you bend up the 11th for tone then release it to its normal note, and then you pull off to the ninth fret, and then you bend up his length again. And you only play that note once, and it's important to note that you only you stay on that note, you don't do the uh because it's a little it's a little nuance that catches caught me out for a while when I was you know uh, when I was learning this song, I didn't actually hear it straight off the bat. So first time round is One more time, I'll try and do it as slow as I can. So bending up the eleventh fret and G string. Ah, I've gone wrong. That's it. Next time around you do this. So, in order, 
without messing up his time, Dave. Golly, it's this. <laughs> And uh, Peter, when he bent the note up, would actually put vibrato on it. But it's not, he's not shaking the string almost. He's keeping it in pitch and just kind of like, it's kind of all, it's from a wrist. It's kind of like a vibrato, a vibrato from a wrist, not really so much kind of finger. It's almost, you know, you shake the guitar basically. So that's important, and that's um that's a very Peter thing to do. Is that, that vibrato? Is, it's it's hard to get as well. It's a really hard thing to kind of nail. So that's the first part. The next part is uh you pre-bend the string, a tone on the eleventh fret G string. You pre-bend it to this note, which is the uh fourteenth fret, and then you release it. So you play the note, and you release it. So it's pre-bend. Play the note and release. And you want to practice kind of. You know, you want to practice getting to that note. Because if it's slightly sharp, it's going to sound weird. Or if it's slightly flat, it's going to sound really terrible. <laughs> So practice kind of pre-bending it and make sure, making sure you got you can feel the kind of tension of where the note is. And to finish off, you go eleventh fret to ninth fret. It's a pull off, and then you go to D string eleventh fret, uh, uh, G string eleventh fret, and you pull off to the ninth fret. So that whole thing is And that's Peter's part of the harmony. Uh, well, the first harmony, there's another harmony in a minute after the sly guitar solo. Um, so the whole thing together is this. Absolutely gorgeous, especially if you have the low E. It gives it context. And that release happens when it changes to an F sharp, so. So you can hear that. So that's Peter's part. Now let me show you Danny Kerwin's harmony to that. Okay, so Danny's part is this bit. So it was between the ninth and the tenth fret on the B string. So you're bending up your um, your B string tenth fret a tone, and it's exactly the same as Peter. You are mimicking Peter, really. It's just a harmony. And then you release the, the tenth fret to the to the actual tenth fret, and then to the ninth. And that's the second time. So the whole thing is this, really slow. So that's the first part. Next part again is pre-bend, 10th fret on the B string. 
and release it. So again, bend up, pre-bend, 10th fret, release. And then you go from 10th to 9th. And then to G string on the 9th fret. And then 9th, 10th, B string. Finishing up on the 9th on the B string. And if you want to get adventurous, you can do both together. not easy <laughs> but that's both, that's both together that is and what I'm doing now is basically 10th fret on the B and uh, 11th fret on the G and I'm bending up both those strings a tone and then I go to bar in the 9th fret on the, on the G and the B and then bend it up again It's great if you, don't, if you want to do albatross and you haven't got two guitarists in your band. Now you again, you bend them up, pre-bend, and release. So that's that. That's Danny's part, that's uh, Peter's part for that main bit. So let me get to the slide part here, and I need to go and get a slide. So, back in about a moment. Okay, so, as you've noticed, I've changed guitars. Why have I changed guitars? Well, um, according to Peter, uh, the slide part in the middle is played by him uh, and he played it on a strap lap style on a net pickup so and I've boosted reverb it's very washed out this this is kind of like the only bit of, well there's some little fills as well which I'm not going to get into um, but uh, this little side side is very washed out of reverb so I've turned the reverb up full and it's this bit So it's really high up. So what you do, um, you don't have to do this with a slide. It kind of, it's kind of true to the song if you do, but you don't have to do it if you can't, you know, if you can't play slide. And I will be doing tutorials soon on how to play with a slide anyway. But uh, I'll show you the slide first, and I'll show you it without. So you want to be on your uh, do the seventeenth fret on your high E, and you slide up to the nineteenth. Then you go to your twenty first. And then back to the 19th, 19th on the B string, and the 21st on the on the uh, B string. So from the 17th on the high E to the 19th high E, and then up to the 21st, back to the 19th, and then up to the B string on the um, 19th, and up to the 21st. And then the second time around, exactly the same. And it's slightly different this time. You do that release from the 21st to the 19th. And then you go from the 19th on the B string to the 21st on the B string. And then you stay on the, 20, the 21st on the high E. And then go back to the 19th on the high E. So really slow. 17th to the 19th. Please forgive that, that was terrible. Next part. And one more time, I'll try and do it without my fingers getting away. It's gonna be really weird to do this, but I'll try and do it. So stand on 17th to 19th again, high E. That's with a slide, without, is you'll be going from 17th slide up to the 19th, then you 21st, uh, pull off to the 19th, then 19th on the B, 
then to E21st on your B. And then again, slide for 17th, 19th on the high E. Uh, 21st, uh, pull off to the 19th. So uh, 19th, B string. 21st, B string. Uh, 21st, high E. And then finishing up on the 19th on the high E. That's really difficult to teach. And that's that section, that's that little nice little slide section. So let's move back to the Les Paul and go to the next guitar harmony part. Okay, so next bit where uh, Danny and um, Peter come back in. Technically it's weird because Peter did that side bit. But anyway, if you've seen the Top of Pops, you know what I mean. They, uh, it's this, it's a, it's a pre-bend on the 16th fret on the B string for Peter, and it's a half step bend. It's really, this is quite, this is quite different. You're going from this note to that note. So it's on a 16th, so you're bending up a tiny bit, and you release it. And it's a pre-bend as well, so you put, you're bending it up before you play the note. And then you go to a 12th fret B string, and then a 14th fret B string. And this pre-bending thing does take a bit of time to get used to. You kind of need to kind of feel really where it is. It's 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 your, it's more in your fingers than kind of like your ears, let's say. You can kind of feel where the string kind of uh, wants to be, if you know what I mean. And he does that twice. Then it's just then the last time he does this. So it's a pre-bend release, 14th fret B string, and then finish on the 12th. And then to finish off, he goes from the uh, 10th fret, 12th fret B, back to the 10th fret B, and then 9th fret B. So just to play the whole thing for you, I'll try and do it as slow as I can. So pre-bend. So that's uh, Peter's part, let me show you Danny's part of that. Okay, so Danny is pretty much is exactly a mirror image of what Peter does, but it's on the high E string. So again, it's the uh, 16th fret, pre-bend, and release. And it's harder to pre-bend the high E and kind of feel where it is, because there's, a, um, unless you've got really big strings, there's not much tension there, so. So it's exact and carbon copy of what Peter's doing. And then to finish off, it's exactly the same thing. And then he goes 12th fret on high E, 11th fret high E, 9th fret high E, and finishes up on the uh, 7th fret high E. And it, this, is, this is the sound. absolutely in unison they are exactly the same uh, pan over and over again and then they're both uh, well actually Danny is just playing an E he's just doing this but I'll get to that in a minute of the rhythm section what the rhythms do so uh, that's the main part so let's talk about the last variation of the riff and the outro okay so the last riff for Albatross um, starts again you know exactly the same as what we've already done and he does exactly the same as the first one, but this time, instead of doing this, he goes 
4th fret A string and he slides from 4th to the 6th on the D string down to the 2nd fret so it's this this one and then this one again and then to finish you go uh, hammer on from the second to the fourth and you finish off there on the um, sixth fret on your D string and you slide up to it and that's it that's the whole of Albatross. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll play the whole kind of last bit on its own. Resolve that note with an E. And it sounds gorgeous. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. This is such a gorgeous song. So, uh, rhythm guitar, Danny's kind of rhythm guitar and the bass, it's just doing this E major. possibly can be with it really and that's it so that's the whole of albatross we got there yeah um it's a gorgeous song to play uh i'm gonna play i've got my own version where i do it all on one guitar i've had to change certain bits as obviously some bits won't work it's just all on one guitar but uh, i'm gonna play it now for you as an outro to this video uh, I'd like to thank you very, very, very much for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope this um, set out to do what it was uh, set out to do. Fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you can learn Albatross from this. It's a great song to play. It's a lovely song to play. It's very relaxing, very calming. Especially if you've got a crazy mind like me. Um, it's really, really lovely. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you again for another one very, very soon. Good afternoon. Good, ab good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My brain is fried. Thank you very much and goodbye now. See you later. Thank you.